very good protection, as neither did Callahan. Bison will look to put a, a good uh, pass rush on both those guys today. We well, mentioned the pass rush, and I think that was one of the biggest differences between last week against Lafayette and this week, or the week before against Lehigh. They had eight sacks against the Engineers, only one last week, very early in the game against the Leopards. They're going to need to get some pressure up front, and if they can't do it with just four, they're going to have to send some other linebackers. Again, we mentioned some changes in the secondary. Mark Miller back to the position he started the season at and had six interception at last year, and that's corner. He uh, goes in front of Willie Jackson on that one side. David Todd, who's played well last two weeks, will remain the starter at free safety. We look for, again, the linebackers, Strohecker, Welty, Strickland, and Bird to make a lot of tackles. Those guys are really the heart and soul of this Bucknell defense. As far as Bucknell special teams are concerned, Chris, really didn't do as much last week as far as setting up scores and contributing as they have in previous games. That's true. But they did have a couple of positive effects from last week. Troy White, two returns last week, over 35 yards on the kick returns. He's averaging 24 per return this year. He's been outstanding. The coverage has been great. They're getting 10 yards per per punt return and a little about ten and a half for Mike Phillips 22 yards per kick return as a unit and they're only allowing six yards per punt return and about 18 yards per kick return this year the coverage has been outstanding Rich Miller's having a real good season obviously 25 out of 26 on his extra points first in the Patriot League with a 39.5 average and his net is outstanding at th about 34 yards per return so he's got to be very happy with the way things are going he's been outstanding this year as far as punting goes as far as the uh, Crusaders are concerned, you mentioned one name on special teams. That's Anthony Pignio. He kicks, he punts, he kicks the field goals, and even returns the kicks. So uh, enough said right there. Bucknell is going to kick off. They're going to have the wind in the first quarter as the breeze is fairly stiff coming out of the south. Bucknell will move from left to right as we view it. Holy Cross will be setting up deep to return it with Pignio and Pat Smith back there. Rich Miller will kick off for the Bison. Bucknell in the white helmets, white jerseys and blue pants for Holy Cross. The blue helmets along, excuse me, the purple helmets along with the purple jerseys and the uh, white pants. Miller teeing it up in the middle of the field this year. Bucknell opponents have averaged about 19 yards a kick return. Holy Cross only averaging 16, but uh, Anthony Pigneo has accounted for 22 and he's gotten the ball and again, has run back 11 since about the fourth week of the season when he was put back deep. Pignio is the very deep man standing at the goal line. There are two other players, Brandon New along with Terrence Browning that are standing at the 15, so they want Pignio to get the ball. Miller's kick is gonna sail towards the corner. Pignio will take it on the two, come across the five to the 10 to the 20, out to the 25, finds a seam to the 30. Rich Miller, his opposite number, will be the first one to get to him, then a whole host of bison will jump on him at about the 33-yard line. Very nice return for Pignio out about 30 yards on the return. Great block downfield for the Crusaders. Brandon New lit in to John Henry. That really opened up the seam for Pignio to run up the middle and gives the Crusaders good field position to start out with. Holy Cross will line up this way. Andy Fitzpatrick will be the quarterback. Again, he injured himself in the Bucknell game last season. The backfield will have J.R. Walls, the freshman out of California at the tailback, and the fullback will be Randy Trivers, who's only 5'4", weighs 170 pounds. He was the tailback in some of the games last year. He operates at the full Holy Cross, a very much of a smash-mouth type team. They'll run with the I formation most of the game. A wide out left and a wide out right. Bucknell in a four-man front. Quick hitter to the fullback, it's Trivers. Trivers may get a yard from the 34 to the 35. We'll call it a gain of one, the middle of the defense for Bucknell there to make the stop. The rest of the players for Holy Cross, Shannon Splain and Jeff Laberanti will be the wide receivers. The tight end, the veteran senior Joe Cooney, a returning starter. Clara Walker, Nickel, Zimorowski, and Earl are slated to start on the offensive line. Second down and nine for the Crusaders after the one-yard plunge to the fullback. Quick count. Fitzpatrick will toss to Walls left side. Walls trying to get around the corner. will get out to the 40-yard line. Russ Strohecker makes a tackle with help from Ed Berman. A gain of five, and Holy Cross now will have a third down and four. Jackson, Castiglia, Patty, and Berman are the down line. Welty, Strohecker, and Strickland line up the linebackers. Miller, Henry, Todd, and Crudup in the secondary for the Bison. It'll be a third and four this season. Holy Cross just 36% on third down conversions, looking for the first first down of the ball game. They need to get to the 44-yard line for a first down. The snap will come from their own 40. Fitzpatrick with split backs, goes back to pass. Rush comes, it's a screen left side. Walls bobbles the ball as he's hit by Andy Welty. It'll be incomplete, it'll bring up a fourth down. Great job by the Bison defensive front. Welty right there reading the play all the way. Ed Berman from this defensive end slot 
drifted back, recognized the screen right away, helped out Welty. Whole lot of confusion, and the running back never had a chance to make the catch. Phillips back in single safety, a 10-man line. Pignio is averaging about 33 yards a punt this year. The snapper will be Brian Mullaney for Holy Cross. Kind of a wide snap, but Pignio pulls it down and punts it. It's a low kick. Phillips will field it on the run on the 32, come up to the 40, and get to the 44-yard line before he is knocked down by Pat Smith for Holy Cross, but a very, very good return of about 15 yards for Mike Phillips. Great job downfield, both John Caldwell and Willie Jackson laying a block for Phillips to follow. We talked about that being one of his stronger suits as a return man, but Justin Relahan down there to try to make the tackle for Holy Cross got laid out by the both of them. Great job of blocking by the Bison Special Teams Unit. Only a 25-yard punt, officially a 14-yard return for Phillips. Gloss opens at quarterback, McHugh and Lemon in the eye. The tight end on the right side is Ted Stover. He gets the call in front of Gentilly today, and it's a quick handoff to the fullback. Same play Holy Cross open their offensive series with, and Bucknell gets the same result, maybe a yard better. We'll call it a gain of two for McHugh. The receivers will shuttle Sikowski, White, Proputnik, and Phillips, and the offensive line, Gay, Hazlett, Donkers, DeFalco, and Fratarelli. Gentilly back into the game now for Stover. Stover had missed a couple of games with a knee injury, but he is back on the field here this afternoon. Second down, and we'll call it eight and a half to go for a first down. Holy Cross in a five-man front. They run the old college 5-2. It's a sprint draw to Lemon. Lemon trying to get to the outside. Can't quite get there. He'll get maybe four yards to the 50. And Bucknell will have a third down and four coming up. So both teams looking at roughly the same distance to convert a third down. Pat Smith from his free safety spot for Holy Cross did a good job of reading the sprint draw for Rich Lemon. They had lined up with the five defensive linemen up front, as you mentioned, Bob, coming after Glutz, expecting to pass. Bucknell going to the ground. Lemon got a good gain out of it. It would have been more if not for an outstanding play by Pat Smith. Third down and four. Bucknell at midfield. They need to get to the Holy Cross. 46 for a first down. Lemon the lone back. Two receivers right, one to the left. Gluss on a straight drop. Throws over the middle. The catch by Mark Gentilly, the tight end for the first down. He's all the way down to the Holy Cross. 41. We'll call it a gain of nine. And that's catch number one for Mark Gentilly. Remember, two or more, and Bucknell is 4-0. Oh. We talked about him being such a vital part of this offense. You find him open in that soft spot over the seam. He's such a, a, a great weapon to have in your arsenal. You get him downfield. He's got some good size. He can knock some people around in the de defensive backfield. First and 10 Bison officially to the 42 of Holy Cross. White to the left, Phillips to the right. McHugh in front of Lemon. This time a four-man line for Holy Cross. Gluss on the option right side. He's keeping it. He'll try to cut back at the hash mark. Dive forward. Maybe get a yard to the 41. Second and nine coming up on the tackle. Nose guard Sam Leo for Holy Cross. What Gloss saw when he tried to cut back inside was four Holy Cross defenders stringing that play out to the outside as much as he could. He, with his good footwork, tried to cut back inside. It was a good idea because he had a gaping hole to run through, but Holy Cross did a good job of adapting and making the tackle on Gloss before he could get any more yardage. Leo, Regan, and Blue, the down three. The outside linebackers, Hoffman and Scott, Godleski and Streeter are the linebackers in the middle. Little sprint draw again to Lemon. Lemon gets outside this time. Flags fly in the middle of the field. Lemon will get inside the 40 to maybe the 38 or 37. We'll call it a pickup of about three. Bucknell will have a third and six coming up if the play stands, but it'll be a holding call against Bucknell, and I'm sure Holy Cross will march the Bison back. Bucknell this year has averaged six and a half penalties a game for about 61 and a half yards. Holy Cross this season has done a little bit better. They're averaging only five penalties for 40 yards. So in this situation of the field, Bucknell made a small gain for Lemon, so he will not be credited with it, and they'll take the holding penalty and march the Bison back to the uh, Bucknell, excuse me, to the Holy Cross 46-47 yard line. Holy Cross coming in one and seven. Bucknell is at four and four. Holy Cross's lone win last week against Fordham after seven consecutive losses. Second down now for the Bison and about 16 to go for a first down. The ball officially at the 48. Donkers left-hander over the ball at center. Snaps the ball to Glutz. Back to pass. Everybody into the pattern. Throws it short to White. Makes the catch on the 46-yard line. May come up to the 45. It'll be a gain of three on the play. And the Bison now will have a third down and 13 to go for a first down. Holy Cross, when they were bringing in their defensive scheme there, Bob, got the nickel package on late. And they looked confused when they were trying to set up. If you're Gluss in that situation, maybe you look farther downfield. Steve Noteboom in one-on-one -on -one coverage. If you can get him the ball, good chance he's going to make his, make the catch with some good size. Bucknell looking to convert a third and 13 this season. They are 
They have completed 32 third downs out of 101 tries. Baxson and I, McHugh in front of Lemon. Gluss looking over a five-man front. Gluss play fakes to Lemon, back to pass, has time, throws it down to the middle, catch number two for Mark Gentilly. He's inside the 30 for the first down, down to the 27-yard line. We'll call it a pickup of 17 to the big tight end out of Pittsburgh. No secret, that's the pattern we're talking about, finding him open over the middle, across the seam, that soft spot in the zone. When they put in the nickel, it's going to be a two-deep zone, and that way Bucknell read it very well. Gloss had him open over the middle, and a guy with the size of Gentilly can find a way to knock some people out and hopefully find the catch as he did on that play. And, of course, a very intelligent move for Gentilly, making sure he got beyond the first down marker before he stopped in the zone. Gluss handing off to Lemon. Lemon around right in inside the 25, follows the block, gets down to about the 21-yard line before he's stacked up by Tucson Roberson, one of the cornerbacks for Holy Cross. Roberson, an interesting story. He, along with fellow cornerback Terrence Browning and Bucknell cornerback Mark Miller, are all from Volusia County, Florida, and all played against one another in high school. Big article in the Daytona Beach paper this week about the game, front page of the Daytona Beach paper, sports section. So there's some interest in Florida in this contest here this afternoon. Second down now and four for Bucknell after Lemon gains sixth on that first down run. McHugh in front of Lemon again, the tight end Gentilly on the left side, that's the wide side. Now McHugh out of the backfield in motion to the left, and they're going to counter Lemon back to the right. Inside the 20, inside the 10, forget it, touchdown Rich Lemon, and that is touchdown number eight on the season, and that one puts the Bison in front six to nothing. Gaping hole on the right side of the line, Andy DeFalco, Jason Dockers, the ones who perpetrated opening that hole and Rich Lemon just had a whole lot of daylight to run to and a couple of blockers in front he blew past everybody to the end zone and the score for Bucknell to take an early 6-0 lead 21 yards on the run for Lemon Miller comes on for the extra point he's made 22 in a row and 25 out of 26 Bison score with 9.03 to go in the first quarter and Miller's kick is up. It is good. We've got a break in the action. The Bison draw first blood. They lead it 7-0. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. You say, Langsam Aberdutlich. To say, quality comes first, you say, Nerd Bisht. And if you want to say, good fresh bread, you say, Stroman. That's because quality and time are the main ingredients in Stroman's new Dutch Country Original Recipe breads. Soft, fresh potato bread. Delicious 100% whole wheat. Sehr gut, Stroman. Stroman. It's how you say bread in Pennsylvania Dutch. Reserve your seat now for minor league baseball at its finest with the Williamsport Cubs. Prime locations are going fast. Box seats put you right on top of the action. At just $150 for a season ticket, you can't afford to miss out. That's less than $4 a game. To reserve your seat for the 95 season or for more information... Rich Lemon carried the ball three times on the drive for 31 yards, including 21 yards for the touchdown. He now has... Eight touchdowns, as I mentioned, on the season in his 21-yarder. Chris, one of his shortest runs of the season for a score. And you've got the information on the drive as Miller kicks off. We'll catch it after the tackle. Miller's kick high end over end. Pigneo will take it on the four. Come up to the 10, to the 15, and knock down inside the 20. Brandon Little, the first man to get to him for Bucknell. Little stood him up and knocked him down with help from some other bison. We talked about Brandon New on special teams for Holy Cross on the opening kickoff making a good block. That time he did not make a good block as Brandon Little just shed him off like a cheap jacket and came up and made the tackle. The drive for Bucknell, eight plays, 55 yards, 432 on the 21-yard touchdown run by Rich Lemon. Holy Cross will start their second possession in worse position than they did their first. They have a first down at their own 18. Fitzpatrick tossing to Walls. Walls trying to come to the left side. Around the end, and Stroecker and Mark Miller will make the tackle. He'll gain a couple out to the 19-yard line, second down and eight coming up for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Bucknell, of course, won last year by 10, 33-23, led 17-0 in the first half in total domination last year of the Crusaders. The defense throttled them tremendously, including picking up two safeties in that first half. Splain to the left side, Liberati to the right side. 
Trivers in front of Walls again in the eye. Bucknell with a four-man front. Very wide splits, especially for the ends. Fitzpatrick back to pass. Rush comes. Fitzpatrick throws it over the middle, making the catch to tight end Cooney. He's got the first down out across the 27 to the 28-yard line. We'll call it a pickup of eight. And it's a first down, the first one of the game for Holy Cross. I'll tell you what, Fitzpatrick certainly took his time making up his mind. Cooney was open for a good three, four seconds over the middle there. And almost coming up to make the play, they almost knocked that play out. And it could have been an interception, if not an incompletion. So Holy Cross with a first down. First and 10 at their own 29. Labarani to the right. Splain way, way out to the left side, drawing single coverage from Miller. Fitzpatrick back to pass. Wealthy from behind. Misses him. Fitzpatrick will run back to the left, to the 25, to the 30, out to the 40 as the Bison have known on the back side after Wealthy had blitz. Feely knocked him down, but way upfield at the 49-yard line. Another first down for Holy Cross. The Bison had nobody on the back side because the far side was flooded with receivers. Everybody was over there trying to pick, shed their blocks and pick up the receivers. Then when Fitzpatrick was forced to run because of the pass rush, he had a whole lot of daylight on the near side. Welty was coming from the back side. He had no idea where Welty was and just out of sheer luck stepped forward and Welty went right by him. 19 yards on the scramble for Fitzpatrick. First and 10 cross, thrown 49. Walls will run up the middle. The flag is down, probably a hold against the Crusaders. Walls would have the first down and an 11-yard run to the 40-yard line of Bucknell. David Todd made the tackle, but from where it's dropped, I think Holy Cross will get their first holding penalty of the game, and that'll be the case. The Bison recently, Bob, in the past two series have a couple of times gone and tried to confuse Fitzpatrick a little bit. They've shifted things up. They bring up Strohecker as a down lineman. They shift in and they bring in John Henry from the three safety slot to try and help out in the run coverage. And then maybe they back him out. They've really been mixing and matching things, trying to confuse Fitzpatrick at the line of scrimmage, maybe get him to change the call. Into the game right now at fullback is Mike Sweeney wearing number 41 up until two weeks ago was a backup center wearing number 64. He has not carried the ball yet this year. First down and 20 now for the cross. It'll be a toss left side to Walls. Walls will get across the line of scrimmage out to about the 42 going over the left side. We'll call it a gain of three. Second and 17 coming up. Jeremy Patty on the tackle for the Bison. Uh, from uh, Lafayette, we have a report that Lafayette defeated Bucknell in overtime in field hockey. One to nothing, the top seeded Leopards win. Bucknell had a goal waved off with three minutes left in regulation. They disallowed it. So Lafayette wins one to nothing in overtime. Excellent effort by Heather Lewis's team against a pretty heavily favored Lafayette squad. Second and 17 for Holy Cross here. The Bison lead at 7 to nothing with 6.38 to go in the first quarter. Fitzpatrick throws a pass out of the flat to Labarani, threw it behind him, incomplete. And now Holy Cross with third down and a whopping 17 to go for a first. We talked about the inexperience on the part of Holy Cross's offense. Labarani, a freshman, really he and Fitzpatrick haven't gotten on the same page. You could tell on that pattern they were just confused because Fitzpatrick looked for him to cut inside. He threw well behind him and Labarani broke to the outside on just a three or four yard pass. Jim Jaroshak into the game as Bucknell goes to the nickel on third and 17. 6.34 to go in the quarter. Again, Bucknell scoring on their first possession. A 21-yard run by Lemon to lead at 7-0. Third and 17, Fitzpatrick back to pass, blitz comes. Fitzpatrick rolls left, throws on the run, and it's incomplete intended for the tight end Cooney. It would have been well short of the first down as Andy Wealthy was just a step behind him, would have been able to make the tackle after about a five-yard pickup, and Holy Cross's Pignio will have to punt again. The thing that impressed me about that, not only the blitz, Bob, but the great coverage downfield by the secondary, not allowing Fitzpatrick to have an easy option to go to. His tight end was his only option, and he wasn't going to get the first down even if he did make the catch. Fourth and 17, Phillips in single safety, standing in his own 24, Pignio will punt. And Pignio going for the right side, but instead it goes to Phillips, and Phillips will be knocked down by Roberson at the 30. We'll call it a return of one for Phillips, and only 28 yards on the kick for Pignio, but he did have good hang time that time. So Bucknell leading 7-0 with 621 to go in the quarter. We'll get the ball just outside their own 30, first and 10, and we'll see if they can march it 70 yards this time for a score last time after the short punt and a good return by Phillips, went 55. Glad you're with us here on a beautiful afternoon in New England, temperature in the mid-70s. First and 10, Bucknell at their own 30. McHugh in front of Lemon in the backfield, the twin set to the left side. It's a toss to Lemon to the short side. Following a McHugh block, Lemon will get three out to the 33. Second and seven coming up on the tackle for Holy Cross, linebacker Phil Tabersi. And what a story Phil Tabersi was, a backup linebacker last year, Chris, as a freshman, played his first varsity game against Bucknell and made 18 tackles. 
It's a heck of a way to break in, and if you look at the way Holy Cross is lining up today, he's going to get an opportunity to make a lot more because he's up on the line of scrimmage. They've brought in five defensive linemen down on almost every play. They're really trying to stack up against the run instead of going back to the base 4-3. White no boom to the left side, and Phillips to the right side. Lemon the lone back, Gentilly the tight end on the right. Five-man front, as Chris said, for Holy Cross. And now flags fly, and the... Play clock ran down, and it appears Bucknell is going to be hit with a delay of game penalty. So instead of second and seven, it is going to be second down and about 12 to go for a first down. Bison were trying to shift some players around, and quite frankly, took their sweet time a little bit too much. And now Infani is going to come over to the sideline, so maybe they won't be in the nickel. It was just a straight substitution. Second down and 12 for, for Bucknell. Holy Cross will blitz. Gluss back to pass, rush comes. Gluss steps up in the pocket, throws underneath, and Lemon dropped the ball. It was intended for him at the 32. Would have been a gain of about four. Great coverage on the play by one of the linebackers, David Streeter for Holy Cross. Incomplete, and again, even if Lemon had caught it, it would not have been worth much. It's third and 12 coming up. Smart play by Gluss just to get rid of the ball. At that point, Bob, I think that Holy Cross might have been looking for a sprint draw there because it almost looked like a run blitz, but they had everybody in the backfield. Gloss was in trouble from the get-go and did a good job to get rid of the football. Bison going to bring Lemon out of the game now as Bucknell goes with three wide receivers. McHugh the lone back. Third down now and 12 for Bucknell. Gluss sprints out to the left side, gets a good block from McHugh, throws it underneath to Gentilly, makes the catch, but it's only a gain of five. That time, very poor decision by Bucknell, throwing it well short of the first down marker, and as Gluss was rolling left, I don't know that he had any many more options to throw to other than Gentilly over there. Well, he did at the 40-yard line, right about the first down marker. He had Mike Phillips for a good two, three seconds open in the seam, that's really a tough decision for Glusk to have to make. So Bucknell will not convert the third down, and Rich Miller will get a tumbling end over end kick. It'll go to the 21. Pat Smith will take it there, come up the field to the 30, shoots out across the 35 to the 33, a gain of 12 for Smith on the return. Good coverage, a good hit for the Bison. 45 yards, though, on the punt for Miller. We talked about the wind being a factor. It's died down somewhat here, but earlier today, the flags, which are at the south end of the stadium, were blowing straight in. It really looked like the, the punts in the pregame were really being affected by the wind, blowing out of that end zone, and Rich Miller certainly got a good boot off that time. Third possession for Holy Cross. 4.29 to go in the first quarter. Bucknell leading at 7-0. Fitzpatrick has him in an eye. A receiver to the left and to the right. Bucknell in a four-man front. Fitzpatrick runs right on the option. He will keep the ball. He'll get to the 39-yard line. It'll be a gain of three on the play. Bison closed that hole down very, very quickly. Russ Strohecker, one of the early men to get to him, along with Bernard Perry, a defensive end. So it is a three-yard pickup, second and seven, coming up for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Drivers back into the game at a fullback, and he is going to get a breather for... One of the other players, that may have been James Nelson, who was in the ball game at fullback. Second down and seven for the Crusaders after the three-yard run by Fitzpatrick. Four-man rush, Andy back to pass, throws it left side, kind of a wobbly pass. Labarani will make the catch at midfield. Mark Miller will wrestle him down. It'll be a first down and a gain of 10 on the play. Labarani was wide open. It's his 17th catch of the season. Labrani, a converted running back. Last year in high school, he rushed for 1,400 yards and had 23 touchdowns, but at a total of 6 foot 165. Don't think he's quite big enough to play tailback, so they've changed him to wide receiver. 3.39 to go in the quarter. Holy Cross into Bucknell territory, just a shade over the midfield stripe. Five man line now for Bucknell as Welty makes the fifth. Fitzpatrick runs the ball to Wall, straight up the middle. He'll get five to the 45 yard line. Great straight ahead blocking on the tackle that time. It was Strohecker with David Todd. Bernard Perry also there, second and five coming up for Holy Cross. A good block for the Crusaders from both David Walker, the offensive guard, and Mike Sweeney, the fullback, as you mentioned, converted center. They both opened up that hole very well for the tailback, Walls, to run through. Back into the game at fullback now is Nelson. He's in front of Walls in the backfield. Four-man line for Bucknell. Holy Cross goes to the run again. They plow Walls up the middle, shakes off the initial tackler. David Todd brings him down at the 38 of Bucknell, but not before a first down. Pickup of seven more for Holy Cross. Somebody in the middle of the line missed a tackle that would have been about a one-yard gain. He spun off and converted it into seven. 
Holy Cross as the clock counts down under three minutes to go in the quarter with their deepest penetration of the game. They have a first and ten now at the Bucknell 37-yard line. Again, the, the Crusaders are in an eye. Labarani to the right and Splain to the left side. Fitzpatrick goes to the run again. They run Walls over the left side, and Walls will have more positive yardage inside the 35 to the 31. It's a pickup of six, second and four. They are just pounding the freshman from California into the middle of the line. Walls this afternoon, six carries for 28 yards. You know, the Bison and linebackers this afternoon, Bob, look like they're playing a little bit, maybe a yard or so deeper than they usually do in the 4-3. And I'll tell you what, they may be having an effect. That's why those holes are opening up a lot better. Now they're going to go five down linemen. Second down and four for Holy Cross. Couple of linebackers come. It's a quick hitter to the fullback. Trivers will get one to the 30 and then get planted on the grass by Russ Strohecker, the middle linebacker, with help from defensive end Ed Jackson. And Holy Cross now with a third and three to go for a first down. And back into the game at fullback is the big blocker, Mike Sweeney, at six foot two forty-five. The little Randy Trivers at 5'4", 170 will come out of the game. Third and three for Holy Cross, trying to keep the drive alive. A minute 48 and counting to go in the first quarter in which Bucknell enjoys a 7-0 lead. The Bison with a four-man ru rush. The linebackers dropping back, and now Strohecker comes down to make a fifth down lineman. Fitzpatrick to Walls. Walls over the right side. He'll not get the first down. He'll get just two, and it'll be a decision now for Holy Cross coach Pete Voss. Does he want to go for it on fourth and one, or does he want to try the 40-plus yard field goal for Pigneo? And it appears he's going to lead the offense on the field. As we look at Bucknell's defense against fourth down plays, 10 of 15 have been converted, including the last six straight. But the last four in a row have been completed by passes as Bucknell had a string in the middle of the season where they nail just about every fourth and short on the run. And I think this is a big spot for Bucknell to get back into that groove of shutting down short yardage plays. Feely right over the ball is the nose guard. It's fourth and a yard and a half. Fitzpatrick, no, he play fakes. He's looking to go deep. Now he'll scramble. He'll have the first down. 25, 20, inside the 20 to the 17. David Todd with the tackle. But a great bit of deception for Holy Cross. He was looking for Shannon Splain deep, who is complaining to one of the officials that he was held or bumped downfield. Fitzpatrick is now slow to get up. And it looks as if Holy Cross is going to have to go to the backup quarterback, Rob Callahan, here as they are looking at the leg of Fitzpatrick. But once again, they did not want to take a chance on trying to run for the fourth and one and a half. And uh, again, with the backside pressure not there, Fitzpatrick was able to scramble for big yardage. I also think that Bucknell, had they been able to shut that play down, Bob, would have gotten away with one because over the middle it looked like the tight end Cooney was sliding out to try and find something in the seam over the middle. He got held up big time beyond the five-yard marker. He was really held up, and there was no way that they were going to be able to get him the football. He was going to go to the ground. No official saw it. And Fitzpatrick is down. They are looking at his knee. Again, remember, he injured his knee and had to have surgery last year in the Bucknell game. 49 seconds to go in the quarter. 7 to nothing. Bucknell leading. When the next snap of the ball occurs, it'll be 1st and 10. Holy Cross at the Bucknell 16. And Fitzpatrick is able to put no pressure on the left knee as he's being helped onto the field. Rob Callahan, the 5'11", 195-pound senior, Excellent student, 368 in economics and accounting, a double major, and also captain of the lacrosse team, was our leading scorer last year with 52 points. Will come in to run the show, and last year he came in after Fitzpatrick was hurt and led Holy Cross to two second-half touchdowns. He is in the game at quarterback. First and 10 for the Bucknell 16. It's a toss left side to Walls. Walls will not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a half yard. Great penetration by Berman, Strohecker, and Patty. Have some other Patriot League games and games of interest. Colgate three to nothing over Lafayette. That in the first quarter with 5:47 to go. Lehigh trailing Delaware seven to nothing. Fordham is idle today. We'll give you some other scores in a moment. 12 seconds left in the quarter. This will probably be the final play. Labarante going to the right side. Splain to the left. Backs in an eye. Walls the tailback. He'll get the handoff. Walls will be tripped up in the backfield by a knifing John Henry on the final play of the first quarter. When we return, it'll be third down and long for Holy Cross. 7-0 Bucknell after one quarter. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Anything else in life? 
Anything else can store peace of mind without freaking do it. Do it. Some are called in sin. Let's pray it. Pray that Christ said, Lord, if you will, then I will. Bob Beeler back along with Chris Carlin as we begin quarter number two. Holy Cross with a third down and 13. The ball is back on the 20 of Bucknell and they need to get to the seven for a first down. And Chris, this is a big, big, long drive for the Holy Cross Crusaders. I believe it's in double figures now. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up. It started all the way back at their own 37-yard line. They've moved the ball very well, but I'll be interested to see how well they move it with Callahan at the helm rather than Fitzpatrick. Callahan, the quarterback, needs to convert a third and 13. Splain to the left, Labarani to the right. Now Labarani in motion, and Callahan is going to call a timeout because he doesn't like the way the Bucknell defense looks. We will take it with him. The first quarter in the books, a timeout before even the first play of the second quarter is ready to go. Bucknell 7. Holy Cross, nothing. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. In 15 years, picture yourself driving a nice, clean, low-mileage newer car for as little as 1995 a day. We also have minivans, cargo vans, pickup trucks, and 15-passenger vans. Remember, DO is the name to remember for all your automobile rental needs. Hey, hey, don't touch that dial. You're going to use your fingers to save money in McDonald's. Because now you can order your favorite extra value meal by number. Wave one finger, get the Big Mac extra value meal. Two fingers for the two original cheeseburgers, three for the quarter pounder with cheese, and four for the McChicken sandwich. Each with large fries and medium drinks for just two ninety nine. Plus tax prices may vary. So, click the turn signal and pull into a participating McDonald's for a two ninety nine extra value meal. See, what you want is what you get at McDonald's. While we were away, the officials put the ball in play in a hurry, and Ed Berman comes up with his 10th sack of the season, a huge loss on Callahan, and it's going to force Pignio to go for a 47-yard field goal out of the hole to Splain. The ball is in the middle of the field. He was oh. hitting him in the pregame warm-ups. High snap, Splain puts it down. Pignio's kick is up, and it is good, a 47-yarder, and that sets the new record for Holy Cross with a total of 34 field goals in his career for Anthony Pignio. As I said, the wind, a big factor today, and it was blowing out of the south. That's the end of the field they were kicking from, and Pignio was nailing them in the pregame warm-ups from 52, and right there he drilled that ball without any problem. Anthony Pignio showing why he's such an outstanding and important part of this Holy Cross team. So a 12-play drive for the Crusaders capped off with a 47-yard field goal by Anthony Pignio, and it is 7-3 now in favor of Bucknell. And again, you have to credit the Bucknell defense getting tough when Holy Cross got in the red zone. And also, Chris, the fact that maybe Fitzpatrick getting hurt might have kind of thrown a little monkey wrench into the Holy Cross offense. It was working quite well, especially with the scrambling of Fitzpatrick. Well, you have to like the drive, the way that they put it together. 12 plays, 53 yards, 5 minutes, and 5 seconds they took off the clock. That's an outstanding drive for Holy Cross, a team that had really struggled offensively coming in, but they did put 31 points up the board last week against Fordham. Well, we saw Anthony Pignio go into the Holy Cross record books as the all-time career field goal guy. Troy White has a chance for the single-season kick return record as he'll have a chance to handle his first one. He needs 15 on this one to erase Brad Bernardini's name from the top of the list. Pignio kicks off. The ball is going to head into the end zone, and it's going to head out of the end zone, a touchback. And with a win, Anthony Pignio with a heck of a leg. And White at least have to wait for another kick to try to get the all-time uh, single-season kickoff return record. And Bucknell will have to start the 20 on this possession. Early moments of quarter number two, 14-24 to go in the first half, 7-3. Bucknell is in front. Take a look at some of the first quarter statistics. Bucknell was 71 yards of total offense, lost four or five for 34 yards. Three of those passes going to Gentilly for 31 yards, and Rich Lemon, four carries for 34 yards so far. Backs in an eye, Phillips to the left, White to the right. 
And out of the backfield in motion to the left, it's McHugh. Gluss will hand off to Lemon. Lemon around left end. Lemon will get out across the 25, out to about the 27. Tabersi along with Jim Cook on the tackle for Holy Cross. David Streeter was also there. Good pickup on first down, a pickup of six. Second and four, forthcoming for Bucknell. Holy Cross with 79 yards. far side it just makes Holy Cross think it really sets it up for later on I think even though it's an incomplete pass that's a useful play the flag was off sides against Holy Cross it gives Bucknell a first down at the 31 they had a second and four somebody must have lined up off sides because I certainly didn't see anybody jump first and 10 Bucknell from their own 31 Gluss throws it right side Lemon makes the catch at the 36 comes across the 40 he'll get the better part of nine yards on the play Bucknell probably needs about a half yard to go for a first down Lemon came into the game Bucknell's leading receiver with 19 catches with uh, three today Mark Gentile had tied him until Lemon picked up number 20 right there so it'll be second down and one is about the 40 no boom and Phillips to the left side Sikowski to the right Gentilly also on the right side, leaving Lemon alone with Gluss in the backfield. Second and one. We'll see what the Bison will call here, whether they go for the big play or whether they try the first down. Gluss will hand off to Lemon. Lemon with a big hole up the middle. It closes down quickly. He'll get two yards out to the 42. And Chris, it looked like the pursuit was coming over to the near side of the field, and Lemon was able to maybe cut through, but all of a sudden the backside closed it down in a hurry. Well, the linebackers did a good job of closing up the holes. David Streeter was the inside linebacker who came through and grabbed the legs of Lemon. They've really done a good job, has Holy Cross, of shutting it down in the middle so far today. Rich Lemon has not gotten very much right up the gut with the exception of his touchdown run. Six carries for 42 yards. Of course, half of it on one carry for the score. 12.45 to go in the half, 7-3 to three Bucknell. Gluss hands off to McHugh, straight up the middle. The plunge play will work for about three, maybe four yards. And the Bison will call it, will have a second and seven. Again, Tabersi on the tackle for Holy Cross. Bison will bring some more hands, people back in the game. Noteboom and Gentilly will come in. Stover will come out, and I believe the Bison will have to send one more player out. I think they have 12 players on the field right now. Unless somebody came out much earlier than that huddle. No, they've got 11. Somebody went out early. Phillips and no boom wide to the left. McHugh now in the eye in front of Lemon. Holy Cross again with a five-man front. Gloss play fakes to Lemon. Rolls to the right side. Has some time. Throws out in the flat. And in and out of the hands of McHugh. He was beyond the first down marker. Would have been a first down at the 45. And plain and simple, dropped the football. McHugh open right at the first down marker. Had to make that catch. But again... Bucknell really concentrating on rolling everybody to the right side and flooding the strong side of the field as far as their pass patterns have gone today. I really think that that's going to be a setup for a play later on this afternoon. Third down now for the Bison and seven to go for a first down. Ball at their own 46. They need to get to the 47 of Holy Cross for the first down. Cross with a five-man front. The lone back is Lemon. Three wide receiver set. Gluss back to pass, has some time, throws it out on the flat to Lemon, makes a catch at the 42, makes a man miss, gets across the 50, and has a first down at the 44 of Holy Cross. Coming over from the back side was the free safety, Gabe Infante, to make the tackle. It looked as if Bucknell was going to get a very short gain on the swing pass, a little flare pass, out of the backfield to Lemon, but he made some men miss and got the first down all on his own. Just a nice little dump-off screen that... Bucknell a design on that play, Bob. Didn't have very many blockers, as you said. Rich Lim in the past couple of weeks has really gotten a lot of yardage on his own in the open field. Bison and Holy Cross territory again. First and 10 from the cross 43-yard line. McHugh out of the backfield in motion to the right. Gluss will hand off to Lemon. Lemon will try to counter back to the left, and Dan Gooden will tackle him for about a yard or two loss. 
back to the 45-yard line. Talk about no blocking. There was none there on the left side. Again, the Bison going back to what worked earlier, the counter that got Lemon the touchdown. Again, they pulled Fraterelli and DeFalco from the right side over to help out blocking. They didn't get there in time, though. Lemon hit the hole too quickly. He had no hole to hit, and that's what happened. And Holy Cross sniffing out that play very well. Second down and 11 after a yard loss. The ball back to the 44-and-a-half yard line. Donkers again over the ball at center. Bucknell and an eye, a receiver to the left and to the right. Gloss will hand off to Lemon. Lemon trying to go around right tackle. We'll get just a couple on second and 11. And Bison now will have a third down and nine. Gooden again on the tackle for Holy Cross. Might have behooved Lemon to maybe try and break to the outside because there wasn't very much on the far side of the field. McHugh had hit the hole just on the outside between the tight end and the right tackle to help open that one up. It wasn't there. If he had broken to the outside, might have gotten a few more yards. Ten and a half minutes to go in the half. Bucknell seven, Holy Cross three. Phillips to the right, Noteboom to the left, Gentilly also to the left. The backs are in an eye, Holy Cross shuffling their defense. And now Noteboom in motion from left to right to put a twin set over there. Gloss will roll to the right side, runs right into the blitz, somehow doesn't get tackled. And now will run 45-40 down to the 38. He will not get the first down. It'll be a pickup of four on the scramble. And Chris, I don't know how he was missed by Dan Gooden. And in the process, Gooden comes off holding his wrist, rips at his chin strap, and appears to be very, very upset. Travis Kopp now will come on as Bucknell will try to get one of those pooch punts to try to knock Holy Cross back inside their own 10. Kopp this season has punted five times, of which he's landed two inside the 20-yard line. Holy Cross sideline telling the defensive front that he Kopp is a quarterback and to watch the fake. Kopp will punt it, angling for the right corner. Going down is Jack Boyle. The ball hits at the nine. It rolls in the five, inside the five, and it'll be down by Bucknell at the three. A great punt. It was down by George Juanitz, and uh, Chris, I know that Travis Kopp is a very good golfer and enjoys that sport. It looked like a great putt. It looked like it hit on the green and just kind of a, a chip, I guess I should say. Very good chip, but just hit on the green and kind of rolled over towards the cup, and it was covered by the Bison. Well, if it was close enough, that would have been a gimme putt for, for uh, Kopp because he just did a great job to get it downfield, angled it for the corner, got a very nice bounce, very soft inside the 10-yard line. That's what you want if you're the pooch punter. First and ten, Holy Cross back on their own three. The backs are in the backfield. Callahan hands off to the first man through. That's Trivers, a fullback. He may not get back to the line of scrimmage. No blocking up front. Jeremy Patty, one of the uh, defensive tackles, and the other defensive tackle, either Feely or Castiglia, who's ever in there now, they didn't move, and there was no penetration at all for Holy Cross. No gain on the play. Holy Cross just trying to get some breathing room here and get out of their own end. Maybe get past the 10-yard line if they do have to punt the ball. Nine minutes now to go in the half. 7-3 Bucknell. Holy Cross with the worst field position of the day. Backs are split now. Callahan to Walls. Walls trying to go around left end. Walls will get out across the 5, out close to the 10. Rob Bird, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Good run on the play of about 7 yards for Walls. And Holy Cross now with very workable. Third down and about 2.5 to go for a first down. Holy Cross did a good job that time, Bob, because out of the split backs, they had only... They hadn't run the ball yet. They had passed it twice. Then on the split backs there, they decided to pull the linemen. Zimorowski and Earl did a good job of getting around and opening it up to the outside for Mr. Walls, and they got some considerable yardage. Third and along two, backs in an eye. Sweeney in front of Walls. Walls straight up the middle, and Walls will lose a yard. Andy Welty, the first one to get to him. A late flag comes down. I don't know whether maybe a face mask will be called against Bucknell, or maybe it's a hold against Holy Cross. And uh, Cross is pointing at Bucknell, so it appears maybe somebody might have got a piece of the face mask. It would be a yard loss on the play, but if it's a face mask, that'll be at least five yards on the first down. And it's a five-yard penalty, and the call will be face masking against Bucknell. Welty, as he came in to make the tackle, came in very hard and was just looking to grab anywhere he could. I think he's the perpetrator who got part of the face mask of Walls, the running back. So the drive kept alive on the penalty. 8-17 and counting to go in the half, 7-3 in favor of Bucknell. Holy Cross with a one-back set, I believe, for the first time today. Back to pass is uh, Callahan, throws it in the flat. Cooney makes a catch to 20. Rob Burt tackles him immediately by the ankle, and Henry and Strohecker jump on him to help out. Gain of four on the play, maybe five up to the 21. Second and five coming up now for Holy Cross. 
Cooney's been a the guy they've been looking for a lot today, Bob. The tight end, they've gone to him in the flat a few times. They try and get him over the middle. They haven't been able to get very much. As we mentioned on that fourth and short play, he was going to be the receiver they were looking for, but he was held up at the line of scrimmage. Cooney last year was 17 catches. This year, with that catch, now has 17 as well. Callahan gives it off on a draw to Walls, and Walls will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Russ Strohecker, the middle linebacker, read it all the way for Bucknell. Ed Jackson had also beaten the tight end Cooney on the play and was in the backfield as well. And Holy Cross now will have a third and seven after that two-yard loss. You know, Bucknell's linebackers is a very smart core. They really know when they're doing. They do their homework by watching the films and can read when things like that sprint draw are coming. Welty and Strohecker filled that hole very well and stayed home when they knew they weren't going to rush the quarterback. Third and seven for Holy Cross. Callahan back to pass. Rush closing in. Callahan steps up, throws it right side. And interference is going to be called on Charles Crudup. Draped all over the back of Shannon Splain. That'll be a first down out to about the 29-yard line. And for the second time on this drive, Holy Cross will get a penalty for a first down. That's really a shame for the Bucknell defense because that ball was not going to be caught by Shannon Splain, I don't think, Bob. Callahan is really tipping his hat this afternoon. Watching him in the backfield on that play, he was looking at Splain all the way, did not even try and check off any other receivers. Splain was pretty well covered, to be honest, and he probably could have looked off and found another receiver, got lucky with the pass interference call really tipping his cap you have to watch that today if you're Bucknell he is not really looking off and checking other receivers first and ten Holy Cross from their own 28 yard line backs in an eye Bucknell will blitz Callahan back to pass throws it left side making the catch out in the flat as the fullbacks and this tackles and he's gonna go for the score it is gonna be Rob Sanchez not getting for the score as Charles Crudup at the last minute will make the tackle all the way down on the 18 yard line well, Mark Miller helped him out. Obviously, some great speed in the Bison secondary prevented the touchdown because both Crudup and Mark Miller broke it downfield the second. He got he shed off the tackle, and Sanchez, the fullback, with decent speed, but he's not going to match up very well with those two guys. Sanchez with a 52-yard reception, hauling it in from Fitzpatrick, and probably all but about eight yards of it on the run. Somebody missed a tackle in front of the Bucknell bench that sprung Sanchez. First and 10 now for the cross at the Bucknell 18-yard line. Great play by the Bison secondary. Look for sure like Sanchez will be able to run down the left side for the score. Callahan on the option will run it inside the 15, down to about the 14. Jackson and Strohecker on the tackle. Got some scores from other Patriot League. The other Patriot League game today is Colgate and Lafayette. Colgate leading Lafayette 6 0, 12 30 to go in the second quarter. Lehigh trailing Delaware 10 3. That's still in the first quarter. We have some other Ivy League scores we'll give you momentarily. 6 20 and counting to go in the half. 7 3 Bucknell, but Holy Cross with a chance to take the lead here as they're in the red zone. It's second down and seven from the 16. Callahan tossing to Walls. Walls trying to get around the corner. Walls gets close to the 10. Jeremy Patty on the tackle, but more positive yards on the play. Six yards, and now it'll be third and one, maybe one and a half to go for a first down. David Walker over there to make a great initial block on Rob Bird. Cut him down at the line of scrimmage. That busted the play open to the outside and allowed him to get yardage because Bird was going to be right there in Walls' at face had it not been for a great job by David Walker on the offensive line for the Crusaders. When you look at this drive, there'll be three mistakes for the Bucknell Bison, two third down plays, which penalties gave first downs to Holy Cross and the missed tackle on the pass to Sanchez. It's a toss right side to Walls. Walls being strung out, now cuts back and will score, but a hold everything, a flag is down. John Henry was knocked down at about the 12, and it's going to come back as Holy Cross will be penalized for holding, so the touchdown to Walls on the scamper for 11 yards will not count. Big break for the Bison. That hole opened to the outside, and obviously it opened illegally because Walls had a whole lot of running room, and once he got past the only Bison tackler around the five, he was into the end zone without a problem. Doesn't matter, though. It'll all go for naught as it'll be called back. Clock stop with 5.24 to go in the half. 7-3, to three, Bucknell in front. Callahan this afternoon is 2 for 2 throwing, but one of them was that swing pass that went for over 50 yards to Sanchez. Brown leading Harvard 10 to 7 in the second quarter. Cornell and Yale tied at 7 in the first. And a bit of a surprise in the second quarter, Penn State and Indiana tied at 7. So instead of third and very short, it's now third down and 15 for Holy Cross. Ball back out to the 23. They need to get to the 8 for a first down. 
One back in the backfield, that's Nelson. Back to pass is Callahan, throwing it for the post to the tight end Cooney, and overthrows him, and it's incomplete. And Pignia will come on for another field goal. He will have a slight breeze at his back. A moment ago, made his 34th career field goal from 47 yards. That is his season high. And he now this year is nine out of 12. Splain will hold this one. A comparable chip shot, Chris, at 40 yards. But this one's out of the right hash mark. Snapping will be Mullaney, trying to bring Holy Cross within one. Mullaney again the snapper, some movement of the Holy Cross line, and instead of a 40-yard kick, it'll probably be a 45-yard as a player one or two out from the center appeared to have picked up early. Bob, I want to go back to that last play that Holy Cross ran into the end zone. Again, they were looking for Cooney over, and over, over the seam, similar to how the Bison looked for Gentilly, but good coverage downfield set up by Bucknell. The two safeties, David Todd and John Henry, It's high enough, it's going, and it's going to be no good. He missed it wide to the right. It was long enough, but not straight enough. So Pignio misses the field goal, and Holy Cross getting down close, not able to punch it in, and Bucknell will get the ball at the line of scrimmage, which will be the 28-yard line their own. Well, Holy Cross put together a very nice drive, Bob, getting all the way down to the Bucknell 28. They started at their own three, and you look at the way they did it, they took about four and a half minutes off the clock. So the Bison with the football, first and 10 on their own 28. McHugh out of the backfield in motion. They're gonna flood the right side again, and this time Gluss falls down, but is able to execute the handoff to Lemon. Lemon able to get around the corner, get very close to first down yardage out about the 38. He may have been uh, knocked out just a yard short at the 37. We'll call it a gain of nine for Lemon. And Chris, that time, I think he read the play a little bit, realized he wasn't going to get it off tackle, and continued to bounce out. But Gluss did a great job somehow executing the handoff as he was falling down. I think that he, his foot probably got it caught up with Dockers' the center when they were setting up to run block. But a good job by Lemon, nonetheless. Great outstanding speed to the outside. Second and one for the Bison. Gluss hands off to the fullback, McHugh. They will convert the first down. McHugh will plow his way out to the 40. A pickup of three. First and 10, Bucknell now at the 40-yard line their own. Twice Bucknell has had a second and one near midfield, and both times has selected the short play to pick up the first down. Bucknell may be setting up a chumming kind of play where they convince Holy Cross that they're just interested in getting the first down. Next time, maybe play fake to the fullback and take a shot on second and long, second and short to try to convert something long. First and 10, Sikowski to the left. Nope, boom to the right, back surrendered eye. Holy Cross in a five-man front, four and a half minutes to go in the period. Gluss tosses to Lemon, right side, following a Mark Gentilly block, and they'll string him out very, very nicely for a gain of maybe a yard or two at most. Obviously, Holy Cross feeling a little bit better in the tackling abilities of their corners because on that play, Bob, they brought the strong safety on that play, who was Gabe Infante over to cover one-on-one -on -one with Sikowski, and they bring the corner over into the strong safety spot. Help out on tackling and stopping the run. Interesting bit of, in a, just a, a piece of... Uh, well, Second down now and nine for the Bison as Lemon is the lone back. White comes in motion to put three receivers on the left side. Gluss throws it out in the flat to Lemon behind the line. Catches it at the 37 and it'll get out to the 44. It is a pickup of two on the play, and Bucknell will have a third and seven. They have tried to flare Lemon out of the backfield a couple of times, and again, there has not been much out in front. Play has not developed very well either two or three times they've run it. But Todd Hazlett did make a nice block for Lemon to get him a couple of extra yards. I think that's, again, just a case of the offensive line having to adapt and get ready to the outside, trying to open up the little screen pass, and they did okay that time to get some yardage. Big play here, third down and six for the Bison. They need to get to the Holy Cross 49. The Crusaders with a four-man front this time. Russell roll to the right side. Gluss still with a football being chased. He'll run 40, 45, 50. Has the first down in the Holy Cross territory at the 44. Gooden makes the tackle with help from Brian Regan, a down lineman who came back downfield. Holy Cross flushed him out of the pocket, and Gluss that time showed no hesitancy whatsoever, tucked it under and made a nice run. About a yard before the first down marker, Gluss 
had the inside linebacker David Streeter coming right at him, just did a nice little tip of the shoulder, pulled it away, and knifed past him for the first down. Rob Gloss, a real competitor. You don't see him take many quarterback slides very much. First and 10, Bucknell just inside the Holy Cross 45. Bison in front, 7 to 3. Holy Cross just missed a long field goal. Backs in an eye, long count for Gluss. Gluss two-step drop, throws it out in the flat. White makes a catch to 40, and he fights his way inside the 40 to the 37, a pickup of eight for Troy White. And that's one of those little patterns Bucknell ran in 1990 to Lester Herb so well. The two-step drop by Todd Hadajik, throw it out in the flat maybe five yards as Herb would be able to take two or three steps, turn around, and when the corner gives you cushion, you can walk down the field on that play all day. The old catch and run, you see so much of it with the 49ers and teams like that with receivers with great speed. Speed, and obviously Troy White with great speed, something that they really haven't exploited a lot this year. Second down now and three for Bucknell as the ball is at the 37 of Holy Cross. Gluss handing off to Lemon, Lemon around the end, Lemon getting inside the 30, sprinting inside the 20, and he's wrestled down at the 14-yard line by the free safety Pat Smith, who comes into the game as the team's leading tackler, and when you give up 266 yards a game on the ground against you, and your free safety is your leading tackler, those aren't good numbers. No, but it, another great job of blocking by Steve McHugh, the fullback. This time lined up in the wing, came in motion to the far side. Rich Lemon says he's prefer to have him in front of him. I don't know why. You give him an extra step to block, he's going to open up some big holes for you. McHugh really with the build of a, a, a decent-sized offensive lineman if you look at him. First and 10, Bucknell a shade inside the 15. We'll call it the 14 and a half. Phillips in motion from right to left, backs in an eye. Gloss hands off straight up the middle of Lemon. Lemon veers to the outside. He'll lose a yard. Back outside the 15 to the 15 and a half. Good defense by Holy Cross to close down the lanes on the tackle. Nose guard Sam Leo, the senior. Bison going back to the counter, and again, Holy Cross sniffing it out. They tried to pull the offensive lineman to the far side to help out Richie to open up a bigger hole. It wasn't there. Really, the counter, that extra step, just gives the offensive lineman an extra second to get over there and help out on the pulling, but it just hasn't been there since Richie took it in from 21 yards. Second down and about 11 and a half. 2.10 to go in the half. 7 to 3. Bucknell in front. They're in the red zone. Gluss on a long count, looking over a five-man front, backs in an eye. Gluss back to pass, throws it out in the right flat to Lemon. Catches at the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Richard Lemon. A 16-yard pass from Lemon. They have flared the passes out to Lemon so much to the left side. This time they took it back to the right side. Lemon now with two touchdowns. That is his second touchdown receiving this season. And the Bison open up the lead to 10, 13 to 3 with 158 to go in the half. Everything is really setting up different plays for later on in the ball game. As you said, they were throwing the ball in the flat to Lemon on the left side. This time they go to the right. Again, they lined up most of the receivers and brought them all out to the left side. And they just dumped it off to Richie on the right. And he had an offensive lineman out there to help block and that's what got him into the end zone. And Miller's extra point is up and good. We've got another break in the action. Minute 58 to go in the half. It is 14 for Bucknell, 3 for Holy Cross. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. With a little perk, they promise to serve you only fresh coffee made to your satisfaction or it's free. It's the fresh coffee guarantee only at Coastal. There are no disclaimers like while supplies last or with an eight gallon gasoline purchase it's just so simple when you go to a coastal store the coffee is either fresh or it's free now that should perk some of you grumpy people up on your way to work coastal where the coffee is always fresh or it's free if you or your out-of-town guests need a place to stay when visiting bucknell the best place to stay is at the days in university the Days Inn is located just a half mile from the campus on Route 15 in Lewisburg and continues its fine tradition of clean, comfortable, and affordable rooms. Call the Days Inn University at 52... Pignio will kick off for Holy Cross. The Bison on the board this time on a 16-yard pass. Gluss to Lemon. And Bucknell leads by 11, 14 to 3. Miller's kick into the wind. They'll be to about the 8, where Pignio will take it. Up the left hash to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 31-yard line. On the tackle, Bob Horst for the Bison. And for Bob, he's the leading tackler on special teams. He has now 10 tackles on the year. Impressive drive for Bucknell. Chris taking the missed field goal for Holy Cross and jamming it down the field. Nine plays, 72 yards, three minutes and 16 seconds it took. 
Capped off by the touchdown pass to Rich Lemon from Gloss. Holy Cross with two timeouts, a minute 52 to work. Bucknell with all three of their timeouts remaining right now. Back to pass is Callahan, still in the game, has all day, throws underneath to Cooney, makes a catch of the 35, run out of bounds at the 40 and a half. He'll be a half yard short of a first down. Clock stops with a minute 45. Again, Wealthy, the guy that pushed him out of bounds. And with Pigneo's range and the wind advantage, Holy Cross doesn't need many more yards for field goal range. They certainly don't. The two kicks that he's laid into today have certainly had plenty of leg behind him. The one that missed was just wide. Pigneo really with some great leg strength showing his ability and why he's such an outstanding kicker and now the all-time leading field goal kicker for Holy Cross. Minute 45 to go in the half, 14 to 3. Glad you're with us on the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg and WWPA in Williamsport. Bison on top, 14 to 3. And Chris, the Bison have responded very well this afternoon in the first half, coming off that very disappointing blowout last week to Lafayette. Defense making some stands when they had to, the missed field goal, and then the offense capitalizing, bringing it back downfield. I think the offense needed a little bit more confidence because they only had two real drives last week when they scored. They only put 14 points on the board, and I think this has been a big boost for them today. Three wide receivers set, only one back in the backfield. Nelson in the backfield, Labarani and Myers go wide to the right, splay to the left. Callahan looking right all the way, throws it to Cooney again underneath, makes the catch the 43, and they're going to say he was stood up in bounds by Jim Jaroshak. The clock will run, minute 36. Now the clock has stopped. But I thought the official signal to let's move the clock, Chris, and the clock has stopped. Well, I think it stopped because that's a first down. Oh, okay, play. I'm it'll, sorry. It'll make it a first down, and the chains will move. But again, going to the Cooney out in the flat, they really like Cooney a lot. They've tried to get him the ball a lot of times here in the first half. Cooney is now four catches for 25 yards. Gentilly is opposite number at tight end, has three catches for Bucknell. First and 10, Callahan throws it in the flat again to Cooney. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, I believe, by John Caldwell. It almost allowed Andy Welty to come up with the interception at the 45. It falls incomplete, though. Clock stops with 121 left in the half. Would have been a tough play for Welty because he was coming up just to try and make the tackle and Strohecker was behind him and the ball kind of fell in between them. Neither one of them really had a good shot at it once it was tipped. Bison now looking at a second and 10 for Holy Cross. The Crusaders with the ball and the 44 their own. Bucknell with a four man line. Lone back is Sweeney. Back to pass is Callahan. Callahan has time, throws it long down the right side and tank. stop here if they very good protection as neither did Callahan Bison will look to put a, a good uh, pass rush on both 